I've tried 16 different things with my hair and it always ends up looking like a sister wife. So this is what we got today. <laughs> 2014 Harry Styles. <laughs> Give the people what they want. What is up guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be focusing on Clean beauty that's not boring. I have actually been really pleased, pleasantly surprised by the releases coming out from some clean beauty brands that have been around for such a long time that like they were something I talked about a lot on my channel in Clean Routine 2019, like with new RMS blushes. Sorry, I just need to take a moment. Are you serious? Like I've already used it. It's so, uh, it was actually even more delicately carved and pressed than that. But either way, those just, all kinds of gorgeous things and today I am determined to do something that is not boring because there is the clean beauty aesthetic and I feel like when we talk about clean beauty a lot of times it, we're not really talking about one common set of ingredients like almost ever even with like the really really old school brands like they are coming more towards the middle you know like the Wellness to radicalization pipeline has made people really want to stay in their lane. It might deviate from clean beauty in terms of the eye look because there just aren't that many exciting things out there <laughs> or things that I'm excited about. Like there have been. Aether is pretty much the only brand that makes like an exciting clean beauty eyeshadow palette that I can store in my brain. I don't know. There's so much makeup out there. This is a stupid intro. Let's just go ahead and jump in and start talking about some makeup. <laughs> it is Friday of the longest week of my life. <laughs> this week, my husband had a horrible debilitating sinus infection. I had an ulcer on my tonsil and I'm almost done with my steroids that have, you know, brought me back to not wanting to die. And my child went home on Tuesday with throwing up and diarrhea and then stayed home Wednesday. And then we like crossed our fingers on Thursday and then he's back at daycare. Today, I'm supposed to go into the city today and I'm going to stay with Simbri and I'm going to meet Hannah for the first time and we're going to have a sleepover and I have been absolutely clawing down the walls, excited for this day and nothing is going to stand between me and the city, <laughs> okay? So that's just giving you an idea of where my mind is at right now. I am so excited. Anyway, I gotta do something with my hair. See what I mean? It just, I'm giving, I'm getting this like puff in the front that's just giving sister wives. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yes. Okay, first of all, let's put some makeup on my face. Um, I'm going to actually start with this, okay? This has been confounding me. So this is the Ilia C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. And Ilia in the conversation of clean beauty has really stuck to their guns on ingredients and things like that, really trying to make things that are, I feel like considerate of people with sensitive skin. I feel like they took that angle coming out of the clean beauty craze and they were like, look, there's still a use case for this. And they're still making makeup that in large part doesn't have a lot of silicones and it doesn't have fragrances in it, thank God. Things like that, but this is weird. This is weird. This is a tinted SPF that comes in, I think three or four shades. And recently I have seen stuff on their Instagram being like, pat it, don't rub it. And I'm like, look, don't, I'm sorry, but don't put an SPF on the market or don't try and sell it to me and tell me that I have to pat it onto my face. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm sorry, that is beyond the line of reasonability for me. So anyway, they sent me this, either Howell sent me this, somebody's like, they facilitated getting this to me and I have the shade Tone One and it's a little bit tan for me and it is quite different from, woo, as you can see, their super serum skin tint. It smells pretty similar, has less pigment to it, and it just makes everything pellet. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Fine, I'll pat, good grief. But yeah, I'm putting it on on top of just the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream right now. So that probably has silicones in it. I love that stuff. <laughs> I'm so glad they sent me not just the jar to try, but also a refill. But yeah, this does not get my stamp of approval. I have no idea whether it works effectively as an SPF. I mean, I, I would assume it does, but don't make me work this hard to put something on my face and have it like stay nice, you know? Keep sweet. Oh no, <laughs> we're down a weird road already, aren't we? I also put a ring light up because it's been so overcast. The only thing is I don't have my background lit and our, this is gonna be just one of those videos, guys. Our electrical situation in this house is a nightmare. Things just go out 
like overhead lights go out and you replace the light bulb and it, it wasn't the light bulb. <laughs> it's just the wiring. And in our living room, it was a case of you flipped the switch. We literally thought it didn't work when we moved in. You flipped the switch and you could do a full like four or five count before the light came on. My kid thought it was super entertaining. It was always like a surprise. Like when's the light gonna come on? And then it finally died too. So <sighs> all that to say, the background is not lit. So I'm trying to make the best of the situation right now with like a very dim ring light. Now I haven't gotten a chance to use this like as my main complexion product on camera yet. So that's what we're gonna do today. So this is the Care Weiss, the beautiful tint, and I have it in the shade F1, which I think is the same shade that Hannah has. And it was too deep for her, but she did talk about how it matches her undertone so well that like she can kind of split the difference. It's easier to split the difference, I guess, when something matches her undertones versus something that is like her lightness, but is like wildly off in terms of undertone. Either way, I love, I really love this. I think it's really, really beautiful. I like the coverage level. You don't need much. I'm just doing one little pump here. And the only thing that I find is a misgiving about a beautiful, functional, silicone-free formula that's only $45 for Kierweiss. That's just, that's a steal. That's a shaborgan. It's just <laughs> the smell, you know. I'm not gonna harp on it this time because I just absolutely went off last time. Maybe this isn't the lightest shade because it's kind of dark. I need to double check on that. Maybe L1 is like the lightest and this is like fair one or no, fair would be lighter than light, right? Either way, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so like what I have underneath it right now is super balmy, like dewy. And so don't let that mislead you. When this dries down with a little tiny bit of powder, it is so utterly beautiful the way that it just like blurs everything on your skin it makes it look like your skin but better you know there's really not that many ways to say that but i have really really enjoyed wearing this and i didn't give it its due the last time that i wore it because i applied it on top of the chanta guy was that what i did i can't even remember i have so many of these liquid and cream bronzers at this point that they're all just kind of blurring together in my brain but we're gonna do another one today today i'm gonna be who? I'm not sure. Today I'm going to be working with this new little guy. This is the LYS No Limits. It's like a, a cream bronzer. No Limits Cream Bronzer and Contour Stick. This is $19 and it comes in five shades. It's almost all sold out on the Sephora website. LYS is a black owned clean beauty line that is very affordable, you know, for prestige beauty at Sephora. I've already used this as you can see and I personally as a fair person would recommend using it on a brush to distribute it onto the skin instead of just like swiping it onto the skin because or swipe swiping it onto the skin because it is very very pigmented and I think that that's a good thing. I'm not sure about the color yet though. I think it's a little tiny bit green for me but maybe I just put a little too much on last time so we're gonna be really really careful. That's one of the things that's going to be in my spreadsheet slash rating system when we do finally deep dive on all these cream bronzers, which I think I finally have them all in my hands now, but I'm going to rank them on several things. One of them being opacity, like pigmentation level because the new Charlotte Tilbury is super, super intensely pigmented. And while that might not be someone's preference, it also makes it really cost effective. You know, although Charlotte Tilbury, I don't think that they've ever really worried about being particularly cost effective. Do you see how that's not the most like naturally occurring shade on me? It's pretty, but it's a little bit yellow green. It just stands a little bit in contrast to the more neutral undertones of my skin, but less is more. And I'm just blending this down my neck. <laughs> this is this scotch and soda shirt that I got from Rent the Runway. Like it's not mine, but it has like all these like cacti and stuff on it. I'm pretty, pretty obsessed with it, honestly. Camp shirts are like my, one of my favorite silhouettes. I love them so much. They're always short. That's the only thing that bugs me and like why I don't buy a thousand of them is because I like to be either be able to tuck things in or tie them at my waist and I have a waist as long as the Nile. All right, the next thing is old news. It is not new by any means, but I didn't give her 
what she deserves in terms of like time and attention on my channel. It was just crowded out by other things when it was released. And this is the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. I will say, I already know that that's a misnomer. I don't think that it is full coverage, but setting that aside, it's very pretty. I have the shade LN3, it comes in 25 shades, and it is $18, just like my beloved item beauty. And I'm putting a little more on than I typically would because it is a little less coverage. And also I wanna kind of balance out the color from the bronzer because it's just not, it's not perfect. Oh, but it's going to be. Man, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it. Like, I always really have loved the powder formulas from RMS. Their creams have always been really precious. And I think that that's been, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Like it's definitely because clean beauty can be like that. Like luxury beauty can't, they, you know, if people pay for it, they'll do it. And it's always been these teeny tiny little pans, but also expiration date for clean beauty. Their stuff was always supposed to be like, you know, unheated and stuff and supposed to, you know, keep the, actives, the active ingredients that they had in there, more active basically, because they hadn't been like heated and processed a whole bunch. That was RMS's whole gig. And their powders I felt like were a lot more generous. I used to love that bronzer that they had, but I don't know, I either, I don't remember why I got rid of it, but we, a lot of us just stopped talking about RMS because let's be real, like Rosemary has shot us all a few messages. Don't pause in the middle of that. She has fired off a few, messages to influencers that are just inexplicable. <laughs> She's just said some really, really bizarre things and on the record, you know what I mean? Like you can find articles about her just like, just saying stuff that's just, it's just purely questionable. And so I think a lot of us were like, yeah, I'm just gonna back away and see how this one goes. But while she is, I believe still, you know, at the helm of the company and everything, they did sell and they have a new CEO and stuff like that. And you can really feel it in the branding and in their releases and these. I think that they are like the old powder formula that I like so much, but like there's just something, somebody's breathed fresh air into this whole concept. So those are the ones that I got. This is the Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. Before I put those on, I'm just going to powder a little bit because that Ilia SPF, it just, it just keeps you, it keeps you dewy, okay? And it's not tacky or anything. I just, I feel like the emollients of it on my skin in a nourishing way, but in a way that I think it's going to grab if I just put blush directly onto it. So I'm taking my Kosas. I'm so proud of this like divot that's happening in here. This is the Cloud Set in Airy. And just powder, powder, powder. Oh man. I just had this like chaotic urge to put on my neon headband from Lulu Sadugi with the fruit all over it. It might happen. So I got the shade Maiden's Blush. I need to talk about the price here. These are at Sephora. RMS is still at Sephora. Hydra Powder Blush. This comes in six shades and they're all irresistible. They're so pretty. I picked these because they were weird. These were the weirdest ones I saw because they're so, so pretty, but like your girl's got plenty of powder blushes. It was more likely that I would reach for them if they added something more, you know, complex to my collection. So these are $30 a piece and I was so scared, you guys. I was so scared that I was going to get them in my hand and they were going to be like Shantike. You know what I mean? Little precious things. So for the sake of actual product here, this is 2.5 grams from Shantike, their Bliss Blush, which yes, I still gosh darn use because they always get me. I'm gonna use it again today, Shantike. It's good, okay? It's just insulting. And this is seven grams of product. We're not skimping here. It's nice. That's nice. That's nice of you. Thank you, RMS. So it's like big enough. I can get a brush in there. It doesn't feel precious. And uh, this this shade, it looks like a bronzer, but y'all, it is like, I call it sunburn on the fjords. This is the sunburn portion of it. Mm, I'm so, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm imagining certain viewers of mine right now who I have spoken to, you know, often in the past who are like adding this to cart as I'm applying it. They're like, dad gummit khaki. You show me these pretty things like, look at them, look, look at it. So let me swatch it because like this color is just, are you freaking kidding me? It's that perfect bronze rust. 
but with a little tiny bit of like something a little bit like more neutral under it. It's not orange. <sighs> and it looks shimmery, you know, it does have some, ooh, some iridescent quality to it, but at the same time, it's RMS. RMS is, again, it's kind of like Shantikai in the sense that it's very mature skin friendly. And so that reflective quality, it just adds luminosity and blur. It's not glittery. And the other one has like a slight shift to it. So that might help you rule it out if it, you know, really bugs you. <laughs> I am trying to help because I could just use that by itself. Look at that. Look at it. Ooh, I like that so very much. And I am such a powder blush person at heart, you know? I just like something that blurs and then stays put. <gasps> the sun's trying to come out. Oh my gosh, you guys, this morning we had the deer and the baby deer on the lawn. And then we had a pileated woodpecker just like sitting on a post outside of our picture window. And we realized it's sitting on the same post that all the carpenter bees are like colonizing. And Mike was like, oh yeah, he's there to just, just absolutely feast on those carpenter bees. And I was like, good for him. That's awesome. All right, now I'm going in with Hanky Panky, which I'm just gonna watch that one too because, wow, <laughs> wow. This is um, my other alter ego, my dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. Like that is dystopian cowgirl fortune teller, that like burgundy that shifts a little bit blue. You know, old fashioned wisdom would tell you, you have to smile to raise the apples of your cheeks so that you can put the blush in the right place. But I just can't help smiling while I put this on anyway. It's that ruddy, like, mm, sunburn thing. And it's not a cream, so it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Those excite me. Those excite me and it makes me really, really happy. And now for my next check, I kind of knew this was gonna happen because those are pretty, like they're darker colors, you know? It's not even that they're saturated, it's just that they're deeper shades. And so there's gonna be like a little bit of like a contrast there. And so what am I gonna do? I'm going to blend it using my Shantikai Bliss Blush and it just does such a freaking good job of gently blurring that line, blurring where I would have just kept applying more and more blush to try and get that to blend in. You know what I really need to do? Cause I saw Tati use it the other day. I keep forgetting to like pick up the new repackaged version of the PYT blush in exhale because it's very, very similar to this. It's so, 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 so light that it's almost like a color correction on super pale skin when something is really contrasty like that. And it'll also kind of like neutralize things. So that, that needs to happen. Khaki. I just keep forgetting. All right. Let's take a pause for a second and have a look here at my complexion because the Cure Weiss has done a really beautiful job of blurring, blending, covering, still a little dark, I feel like, but I don't know, we worked with it. The LYS, great formula. It really is like, it's pretty and I made it work. And then yeah, those RMS blushes are just next level. Like, I feel like I need to personally apologize to Carrie O'Hearn. I see you adding them to cart and I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I have picked up a bunch of stuff recently. I'm actually gonna do a whole video focused mainly on new stuff from Kaja because I got the mauve bouquet <laughs> eyeshadow thing. But today we're gonna have some fun with my eyeshadow. I'm gonna be reaching into things that are not necessarily clean beauty, but they're good clean fun. So I'm gonna start in the Hindash palette and we're gonna start in this purple shade, which is called Antidote. And then I gotta figure out something to do with my hair because it looks stupid. Okay, this has been like one of my favorite brushes to use lately, especially when I'm doing colorful looks because it like kind of stamps product in a really, really nice way with a lot less fallout. Not that the Hindash palette would fall out, it doesn't. But this is the 207 from BK, it's the travel one with a little short handle, but regardless. I'm taking this purple here, Antidote, Oh, I just gone off. And we're just gonna draw my outer V here and we're going to try and think of something to talk about. Oh, I know something to talk about. The realization that while Harry Styles is an attractive man and a good dancer and looks nice in gender bending clothes, he's not a very good lyricist. I really think he needs help with that. 
there's no shame in paying someone to help you complexify your lyrics. I really, I just, I feel like I listen to his songs and I'm like, yeah, that took you about 10 minutes. Especially when you're trying to kind of compete in the arena that he's competing in. I mean, he's winning. He's obviously winning. He's selling out concerts all over the world. Most people don't really care what his music sound like, sounds like, let's be real. And he is writing pop music, but at the same time, I feel like he is a, a creative individual who maybe in his own heart wants to be taken seriously as a singer songwriter. And I'm like, all right, well, you are up against like David Bowie on one side and like Kevin Barnes on the other. Like you need to up your chops on the poetry, my guy. Listen to some Simon and Garfunkel, okay? Like study. You blew up before you grew up, my guy. And that, uh, as it was video is so phoned in. Everyone's like unsubscribing. I mean, at the end when he dances, yes, absolutely. That should have been the entire video. The rest of it feels so like art school film project. Like it's bad, it's bad. Ugh. I'm getting very, very pretentious here as like an art school kid, but like it's so derivative and it's not even done that well. I said it, <laughs> I said it. And you know what? Now you can say the same thing about my art. It's so derivative and it's not even done that well. I actually have been um, having the same feelings I did in the beginning of my channel before I kind of found my footing. I'm having the same feelings about my art where like when people don't immediately just find something that they feel about it or like, this is so stupid. It's not your responsibility to like validate my art. But when people don't immediately comment like, wow, this makes me feel something or like, this is my favorite one yet or whatever. I'm like, you're right. It isn't good. I wasn't feeling anything good when I, when I did this and it, I need to rework it. And I do feel like to some extent, that's healthy because I don't, I never believe that my work is sacred. Now, when I put a whole bunch of work into filming something and then I have to scrap the whole video, that sucks. <laughs> but as far as just the, you know, sunk cost fallacy of a, of a, of a painting, that part doesn't, I, I want it to be something that I like, you know, full stop. I want it to be something that resonates with people. And so if I have to just like, you know, paint it with gesso and start over, like that's fine with me. That doesn't hurt my feelings. But at the same time, I can't really disentangle the feeling between it's not good enough because people don't like it and it's not good enough because I didn't do a good enough job, you know? Anyway, I'm going to take Match Made here, which I just gag over the shade all the time. It is this like, you know, <sighs> moldy moss in the woods kind of color. And it works really well on top of other things to just kind of add a little obscurity to what could have been just like a, a plane of, of purple right there on the least flattering part of my eye. Hi, Burb. Okay, I am going to rely on the blur of it all here. This is later one, okay? I've already done this eye look. It excites me. I know exactly where we're going with it. So I'm going to take a BK202 and I'm going to dip it into Alter from Alter Ego up here, the light one, because it's just like the ultimate blur and it takes something high contrast that does want to be a little bit translucent on me, like that purple, and it just kind of helps give it enough opacity that it's not messy looking. Now, Set her aside for a second. We're going into my NARS palette. Don't tell Hannah, she'll already know by the time I put this video up, but there's one of these all wrapped up waiting for her downstairs. I hope she likes it. Yeah, there is a another palette that she was talking about, the Anastasia Beverly Hills, like the new one with all those like kind of like, you know, mucky greens in it and stuff. And in my heart, I'm like, don't buy it. Not that she would, she doesn't like just, you know, impulse buy makeup usually, but uh, I was like, no, I already. Speaking of Hannah, Hannah got me, by the way, I'm going to now go in with this sparkly pink color because that's the mood that I'm in. Also look at my nails. <gasps> you guys, it's like matte glitter. It's Kiara Sky, it's called Serene Sky, the color. And it is, it's like glitter, but it doesn't have any shine on the actual glitter. So it ends up just looking like these really cool like speckles. 
I loved him. Anyway, so um, Hannah was talking about, I don't really even know if it was part of the video or just something that she had to exclaim about because it had just happened to her, but I was watching one of her <laughs> videos and she was talking about Heartstopper. <laughs> Sorry, if you don't like Heartstopper, someone has tragically removed your soul. So um, I apologize for that and you've got bigger fish to fry, but I had to announce after finishing that show that um, I am now officially an unabashed, hopeless, pathetic romantic. <laughs> and I won't be coming back. So yeah, it is just absolutely the sweetest, most, most wonderful story. All right, I'm gonna use this color right here. And you know, they say that the gays are coming for us and that if we don't pray the gay away, if we say gay, then the gay is gonna get us. The gay is gonna get us. <laughs> and I've always said, you know, that's so silly, you can't catch gay. Well, I have to tell you, for eight episodes on Netflix, I became a gay 16 year old boy, okay? <laughs> we all did. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. It was just absolutely the sweetest thing that I've ever seen. It softened my heart. And Hannah, I posted about it and Hannah goes, I've watched it 10 times and I was like, literally? <laughs> That's a big time commitment. It's, you know, it's like a 40 hour work week. I'm not mad, I'm just impressed. So yeah, I'm taking that, that purple, that's like, you know, a much more muted purple than the Hindash purple, warmer also, and I'm kind of drawing like up, up here. I don't know why, I just like it. I'm gonna give myself this like higher up V situation. I am going to use this pearl shade. And I'm gonna go here. Taking the deepest like gray shade in there and just accentuating this again. I know you're looking at this going khaki. <laughs> this doesn't look that unusual for you. Well, it's gonna get fun, okay? Bear with me. You know, it's funny. I don't even really like a one and done. Like even if it were to look really great on me, I think that that would bore me to tears because I like Fussing, okay? I like fussing about my eyes. It's like the one place that basically behaves like a canvas. I'm gonna take that purple again. And we're going under. Can you guys tell me some freaking new music to listen to? I've been listening to so much more music lately because I paint but I am so sick of everything that I knew I would. I knew I'd run out of stuff pretty quickly, but I'm like so sick of everything. And I did look at like the release radar. There is some cool stuff coming out. Like Whitney has like a new, at least a new single, if not a new album and stuff like that. But um, yeah, there's only so, so many times you can listen to the things that you love before that's just like, I am no longer inspired. Oh, this looks better even than it did the first time. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm going to take the butt end of a little brush here and I'm gonna dip this into my About Face Beauty in On Point, which is, you know, a ballet pun. We're gonna go right here, boop. And I'm making kind of a, a big blob because I'm gonna put another blob in the middle of it. These are so much fun, they're so easy to work with. So, let's go ahead and do my brows real quick while that dries. Oh wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Look what I found rolling around on the garage floor. The things that I find because my son is a thief. So this is my expressionist brow pencil. It smells like the garage from Well People. And I'm gonna put it on my eyeballs because I DGAF, okay. I like this brow pencil. I also found my milky oil in his, in his stroller. I'm like, okay, child. 
my mom bought me the new Brene Brown book. I'm not sure how new it is, but I mean, it's still in hardback. And it's called Atlas of the Heart. And I've, I'm only like a few pages in and she cracks me up so much. Like I already, for, I had forgotten how much I freaking love her, but it's cool. It's so far I can tell it's like this ex, so far as I can tell it's this kind of like explanation of our thought processes when we feel threatened and like certain things in our lives, you know, make us feel unsafe. And so like our emotions unsafe and like where our brain goes, I'm like, I'm super excited about that kind of stuff is like, I, I, I understand a lot about it, but I can never get enough of it. You know, it's like, I love learning about that. I think that that's the best thing that we can do as human beings. Mike and I were talking about this the other night. Oh, I guess it was because we were watching Heartstopper and you know, they do a pretty good job, I feel like, of representing the highs and lows of being, you know, a gay kid trying to figure his way through the world and finding love and stuff because of the bullying. Being bullied is just, I i was bullied a lot. And um, it is, it's, it's torment, it's absolute torture. And they do a pretty good job of it, but like you realize how conditioned a lot of these kids are, you know, they would be if they were real, to, the just the environment like the locker room culture and everything like that and you just kind of start to think you're like oh, capitalism and you know the current day just this day and age in society and throughout history you know even the good old days like the only people who ever benefited were cisgendered straight usually christian white men and then i thought about it i'm like oh but in, in what currency in monetary currency in usd absolutely but like I would argue no one benefits from it because all of our feminine values are squashed. Creativity, openness, um, compassion, just talking, talking, just talking about feelings instead of shooting each other, like things like that. Those are, you know, just essentially like self-mothering kind of values of just kind of taking the long route, feeling through your feelings. And we have placed such a value on, and I'm not vilifying men here, I'm just saying, you know, uh, archetypal masculine values of producing and earning and um, suppressing your emotions and um, being a leader and, you know, just it, like all of those things, like we put, we put those at such a high level of importance, I would argue it really doesn't benefit anyone in terms of happiness. I don't think that anyone sitting at the top of their pile of money thinking about how to make more money off the backs of people who like actually need that money, that's not a happy person. Happy people aren't greedy, you know? And Mike's like, do you think Mitch McConnell's happy? And I was like, no, I don't think Mitch McConnell is happy. And I think he's so far from a mindset where he could even ask himself honestly whether he's happy that if he did, he'd probably just like curl up in the corner and start crying, <laughs> okay? We're all human beings at the end of the day. No one is immune to the fact that like, when you don't face yourself, eventually it's going to catch up to you. So yeah, just the behavior that is exhibited by the people in power does not speak to me of happiness. These are not happy people. <laughs> all right, let's put some white in the middle of that pink because it just really, it really makes my day, okay? In this world, it's just us. It's a blobbier version than the first time that I did, but like, I don't really care. You know, it's not the same as it was. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do eyeliner and mascara and the rest of my brows and we'll come back and just put some lips on real quick. Where's my dad gum eyeliner? Um, Fenty, where are you at my billionaire sister? There she is. Just had to call her by her name.
Oh, it definitely needs more blush, doesn't it? So yeah, hanky panky, let's bring her in. It really is like that color, isn't it? The color that's on my eyes. It's actually incredible to me like what makes me feel beautiful one day to the next. I'm gonna turn this back down. The sun, she is coming out. But yeah, it, it is, it's like some days, like this would not make me feel beautiful today. It's like I need, I need the chaos. And you know what else I need? Contour. I'm gonna use Victoria Beckham because it's a clean beauty. And do a little bit of that. Connect the dots. You sitting on the floor. Just a little more glitter from that NARS palette. It is so fun. What a good palette. You're a good palette. A little clear, clear brow gel here. And I'm going to use Bikini from Victoria Beckham on my lips because I just need something that is going to make everything look really beautiful and, you know, nude, but like. not going to distract her or anything else. So it's not boring by any means, but it's still quite wearable, I think. I'm gonna take a little bit of the darker shade from that palette and just obscure my eyeliner just a touch. That's the wrong brush. So I used the Fenty puppy eyes eyeliner because it's just a little bit softer and grungier. There we go. Yeah. I just wanted something that wasn't going to be this like super, super graphic line, but still give me something. And I, I just like it better than the bronze one from Victoria Beckham Beauty. So let's take the hair down and do something that makes some kind of sense with it here. Mom, mom, mom. Magic radiance. I've like kind of given up on styling my hair. It just is what it is at this point. <laughs> Maybe it's a headband moment. Maybe it's a headband moment. What do you guys think? Is this the vibe? Is this it today? What do we think? You know, I gotta mix it up. I like doing things that put me outside my comfort zone and this is just fun and weird. <laughs> I like it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's chat final thoughts here on the stuff that was like new to me today or I felt was worth mentioning as part of like the clean beauty array. Starting with this. Ilya C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. Again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rant, but I don't like how temperamental this is to put on. They even admit that it's temperamental to put on. The directions are very specific about patting it onto my skin. Skincare, I'm sorry, no. It needs to be something that I can do without thinking about it. And this makes all of my skin other skincare pill up. And that worries me about like the efficacy of what else is going on with it and stuff like that. And then also what's gonna go on on top of it. It's just a too temperamental of a formula and it's not for me and I wouldn't recommend it. And it's not inexpensive. Now the Kierweiss, this being a silicone free formula and being $45 for Kierweiss, we've already touched on this, but if this, if you didn't watch that video, I, I really dig this and I think it's a really good, it's just a really good product. I think it's very, very pretty. It wears a long time. It's got a nice amount of coverage that I feel like it looks natural, but it still does, it does me a lot of favors, let's be honest. And it's pretty flexible. Like the fact that I could put that on top of that SPF and it didn't freak out, but I could also just put it on bare skin, powder it. You know what I mean? Like it is a very agreeable formula. It doesn't feel like molten lava on my skin, which is what can happen sometimes with a lot of foundations that don't have any silicones in them is that they don't really want to stabilize on your skin. I feel like they did a really good job with this. I just wish that they would take the fragrance out. LYS. I really like this formula. The delivery system is giving hourglass there's not really any getting around that but you know there's nothing new under the sun so you know we're gonna move on inexpensive a pretty generous amount of product you get 7.2 grams of product here again they you can check their ingredients but they do have clean beauty claims it is beautifully black owned so it's very very inclusive in its shade ranges and that might even leave me out like there could be one lighter shade that i think would be better for me because these undertones don't particularly work but like 
that's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have really, really gorgeous, super saturated, very deep and nuanced and informed um, dark bronzer and contour shades for, for black skin. So that made me really happy. I think this is a great price point. If you are complected like me, this one might not be the number one choice for shade. The LYS concealer, I feel like I tried this at the wrong time of the year when I was wearing more high coverage makeup because now I do really dig it and I'm going to continue wearing it. I like the shade. Again, I got it in LM3. I like the price point and I just need everybody to know it's very hydrating. It's very pretty. It is like medium coverage at best. I would not have called it a full coverage concealer. It's a very, very pretty concealer. It's just a misnomer. And our guest of honor today, these RMS blushes. If you also loved the RMS old like bronzers and stuff that had that beautiful kind of like soft velvety, almost shimmery kind of satin formula. <sighs> yes, these are right there within the same vibe. It is just such a lovely, gorgeous formula. And these are like, I would say the the darkest shades. Like I, I went, like I said, for something that was a little off the beaten path so I'd get more use out of them. But there are some incredibly practical shades in this collection. That to say, these are very practical for me. I am going to fall asleep thinking about these. Like this excites me because it gives me like sunburn, like total awesome, like sunburn cheeks. And this excites me because it gives me some somewhere between the fjords and a dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. I would use this on my eyeballs. It's just good. They're just really good. And they feel generous in your hand. The pan is large. Like you can really cram a brush in there. I like that. Everything else that you guys saw today has been seen on my channel before but just combined today in different ways, which is the beauty of having a lot of different kinds of makeup, right? But I feel like adding the Hindash palette, like basing it with that purple and then building kind of a more pinky burgundy look on top of it, it made something special happen. And then, you know, I hmm, I really, really love the About Face Beauty, the, eye, the matte eye paints, but like they're freaking out right now. And I think it's because I have too much like emollients on my skin and it all has to do with that SPF. So that one really, I, I know I'm harping on it, but it's a pass, it's just difficult. So yeah, that's, that's the vibe today. That's the energy. And uh, I hope you guys had fun. I don't know, let me know if you did. Give it a thumbs up, tell me in the comments. And if this is your first video of mine that you are watching, hi, my name is Khaki. Most of it's kind of like this. I just basically try and shoehorn as many of the things that I'm loving into a face of makeup at any given time. And then I try and back calculate that into some kind of title that people might understand the concept of so that they might click on it because it's a lot of fun once you get in the video but you'll never know if you don't click on it so that's uh that's pretty much the concept of my channel and i give you comprehensive reviews of things in comparison to the heaving stash that i have been accumulating since january 1 of 2018 so if that sounds fun to you maybe subscribe while you're here it's mostly chaotic good and uh thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me today i love you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one bye